Yo, what's going on, buddy? This is Dylan Talk Sports. My name is Dylan. In this video, it is National Signing Day for college kids or high school kids to sign to the college they want to play football at. And what I'm going to be doing as an Ohio State fan is kind of going through, reacting to some of the uh, signings that we've already gotten. Jeremiah Smith was a big one. He has now signed to be Ohio State, become play wide receiver at Ohio State. There were some other big time talents. We got a couple of offensive linemen. Aaron Nolan, the quarterback, he is officially now signed to Ohio State. We're going to pretty much kind of go through everybody, break it down. I'm going to kind of give my opinion on a yay or nay on do I like these recruits do I think they're going to be with us hopefully for the next three to four years with us or are they going to be probably somebody that I see just going to be transferring out are they going to stay are they going to be an impact are they going to probably ride the bench I'm going to give my full opinion on everybody like I said I'm just going to kind of give my opinion if you do not like my opinion that is your opinion to have a different opinion if that's your choice to have a different opinion if you have a different opinion and you want to leave it down in the comment section down below feel free to do so but we're going to get right straight on into this if you're going to enjoy as always make sure you do drop a like it's very much appreciated if you do so and without further ado let's get into it Okay, real quick, I'm going to be kind of getting all my info from 11 Warriors Instagram page. Basically, the kind of most reliable source that I've seen as well as Ohio State's official football uh, Instagram account. So if you want to check those out, I'm going to put a link to this uh, Instagram page, 11 Warriors, down in the description if you want to go get all the uh, news and everything in your spare time. If you want to be able to be updated day to day, hour to hour on the latest uh, signings, feel free to do so. Starting off, this was a kind of a heartbreaker. 2024 four-star running back Jordan Lyle is actually going to be flipping from Ohio State to Miami. This one was a sad one because he is a really good running back in this high, uh, upcoming class. And I was really hoping Ohio State would get him. But, I mean, if you cannot read the comments from what everybody's been saying, it's, it's like these guys, they have the chance to go to a big-time school and go make an impact, but they are just taking this NIL money and they are running with it to go somewhere else. And I get it, Miami, why wouldn't you want to go live in Miami? Especially like if Miami is saying, we're going to give you the starting job right now. I see that because I was a high state, Trevor Henderson, if he decides to come back, it leaves some uncertainty for a lot of the other running backs in this class that are going to be possibly committing to high state. If Trevor Henderson does leave, does this guy want to fight for the job or does he just want to be hand given the job? This one is a tough one that high state is going to have to get over, but I, I think we'll kind of get by with it. Next up is Leroy Roker. He's a three-star safety. Do I see him making a big impact right away? No, but I think if t as time goes, maybe within, maybe if he redshirts a year, maybe if he can go get like a sophomore season, maybe his junior season, he'll be able to blossom, get on the field. It, it all just kind of depends with these guys where if they are not showing the capabilities to play in practice, the coaches are not going to put you on the field. That's the thing these guys need to realize. If you are not showing the potential in practice and they cannot look at you and say, you're going up against our ones right now and you can't even beat them. Why would I put you on the field against other teams? From what I've heard about Leroy is he's got like great ball skills. It says up here, great speed, great ball hawking. He, I think, runs a pretty good 40. Uh, from what I've seen online, people have said he could probably be, he's like up around like the four threes for all we know. Uh, but I still think he could, he'd be a really good safety. But I realistically, I could see him possibly being here maybe a year or two and then already be transferring out if he doesn't see the field. Next up, we got Sam Williams Dixon. I know I just talked about the other dude, uh, the other running back. Tr uh, flipping his commitment over to Miami because of the uncertainty of what our running back room is going to be. But Sam William Dixon, it says here he's an Ohio State guy, brings a versatile skill set to the Ohio State offense with the ability to play both running back and receiver. That'll be huge. We kind of like the Xavier Johnson kind of Swiss Army knife kind of player. This was something that I talked about in a video a while back uh, about how I said that Ohio State, they need to start just being hammering in on recruiting guys out of Ohio because there's a lot of players that are coming from Ohio and they're leaving and going to schools like Alabama, Georgia, up, up north in Michigan. We need to keep these guys in state, especially the three, four, and five star recruits. The guys that are going to be possibly big time players in the next year or two could possibly go to the NFL. Those players, we need to keep in the home state because think about it. You grew up in Ohio. You probably grew up in a high state fan. And then we're just letting these guys leave and go other places. But like I was saying with Sam William Dixon, uh, the fact that he can be a running back and a receiver, he's going to, he kind of reminds me a little bit of, like I said, that Xavier Johnson kind of player. He could develop a little bit into that. Him being a three star, and I realize the three, four, five, two, one, whatever star you are, doesn't really impact you because as long as you can go out there on the field and you can show up your freshman year in any sort of practice that you get, any chance you get on the field, if you can go out there and show the coaches, damn, he's good. We need to get him more playing time. You're going to get the playing time, and then you can go out there and blossom. So I don't really like the whole star rating, but Sam William Dixon, I think he could be an impactful player. Like I said, Xavier Johnson is going to be his comp, in my opinion. He's going to make an impact. I, I, I see it. Next up, we got Bryce West. He's going to be our future lockdown corner. I, I can really see it. Four stars. 
uh, out of Cleveland, Ohio. So we got another Ohio guy in st in state coming to Columbus. From what I've seen of his high school tape, this dude can lock down anybody. It doesn't matter if it's a deep route, uh, comeback, curl, slant, uh, corner, cross. It doesn't matter what you're running. This dude's going to lock you up. The only knock I would have on him is he is a little bit on the lighter side. So I think he's going to struggle a little bit against stopping the run. Maybe if he puts a little weight on, he could help him out. But I still think he's going to be an excellent corner for this team. This is the big one. Air Nolan uh, coming to Ohio State out of Fairburn, Georgia. Says here, Aaron Nolan becomes only the sixth five-star quarterback to sign with the Buckeyes out of high school and brings a quick release with pinpoint precision to Ohio State. The thing with Aaron Nolan that is kind of questioning me is, is he going to be the guy next season? Like, I've heard a lot of talk about Aaron Nolan. He's going to come in. And with all these receivers we got coming in, we'll talk about some other receivers here in a minute. Like I said, with Jeremiah Smith, and we already have Brandon Ennis, Carnell Tate, a lot of these other guys that are already on the team. Could Emeka Buka come back? Marvin Harrison Jr., for all we know, they're probably not coming back. But like I was saying, what what is the quarterback room going to be? Are we going to start Devin Brown? Are we going to start uh, Lincoln? Are we going to start Aaron Nolan? Who could be the starter? With Ohio State, we're not really known for starting freshmen. JT Barrett was an exception that that was just like a just random out of the blue moon type of situation but with Aaron Nolan he's got the skill set to where if we wanted to start him we could I just don't see Ryan Day doing it I feel like with Ryan Day he likes to go with more of the veteran present guys or at least somebody that has a year under the belt within college before he just gives you the reins I think with the Ryan Day what his decision had to be with uh, Aaron Nolan is do you want to win right now if you do and you want to push all the chips in Aaron Nolan's gonna have to go on the field if you feel like your job is still kind of safe, but you can win with Devin Brown and you can go beat Michigan next year with a Devin Brown or a Lincoln, roll the dice, I guess. I just realistically think Aaron Nolan, he's going to be the kind of guy to where he's going to be starting. If not next year, he's 100% starting the year after. 1000%. He's going to be a kind of guy where he's going to be like CJ Stroud. He's going to sit that first year, kind of learn, but then that second and third year, he's going to just shoot to the moon. From what I've seen on his tape, he's like I said, He's got pinpoint accuracy. The dude can run. He's mobile. He can throw it downfield. He's got an arm with a cannon strapped to the side of it. The only problem that I'm going to have with him is he's got a lot of pressure going on him right now. Everybody wants him to be special, be the next Justin Fields from what we had, or even at least be a leader like what JT Barrett once was. If he don't live up to that, he's fucked. Next up, we got some offensive linemen. Gabe Van Sickle, I think is how you say your name, bud. Sorry if I'm butchering it. Uh, but he comes out of Michigan. Believe it or not, we're getting some boys out of Michigan coming down here. Uh, says here, uh, he he's going to be more of just like a deaf piece for the future. He could get on the field. From the way he looks, I'd say he's probably like about 300 pounds, maybe a little bit under. He's going to need to get up in the weight a little bit. But I can realistically see, it, like I said, be a depth piece. If a starter goes down, he needs to step in just for a couple of plays or maybe like a game or two. He could be a good piece for us. Now, if he can develop into being a very, very good offensive alignment, that would help. Because our problem the past few years is... We have been struggling to, to run the ball and stop the run. If we can fix one of those sides of the ball and be able to run the ball, especially that inside like zone type run scheme, that would be huge. Because hell, look at the last few years why we've been losing to Michigan. We can't run the ball. But for this kid, Gabe, I would say this. He's either going to be starting within a couple of, If he's willing to wait two to three years, hopefully by then he'd be starting. If he's not willing to wait, I'm going to say by at least the second, third year, Probably by the third year, if he's not on the field, he's going to be going to Ryan Day saying, like, I, I got to go. I, I need to play some football. We get Devontae Armstrong, another Ohio guy, interior off of the line. This dude will be huge for us. Uh, says here he's got some athleticism and power to make him a promising guard prospect as he joins Ohio State along his twin brother, which I forget the name of the dude. I saw it within the 247 Sports uh, recruiting uh, rankings, but that dude was already uh, committed to Ohio State. So brothers both coming together, play for Ohio State. Uh, if he can be a depth piece, kind of like the last dude gave, that would be huge. It seems like a lot of the five-star and four-star offensive linemen are all going to, like, seems like now Colorado, uh, Georgia, and Alabama, and even Michigan, because Michigan has had, like, this top-tier offensive line the past two to three years, so offensive linemen are all going to these schools. Ohio State's struggling in that department. If we can take the three stars and develop them, that would be nice, but I, I don't know if I can see it. Looking at Devontae, uh, will he get on the field? I don't know. But I would say this, if he, once again, kind of like with the other dudes, if he don't get on the field within the next two years, he might just be looking at everybody saying, I, I gotta go. Next up, we got five-star corner Aaron Scott. This dude is going to be a stud for us. I can't wait to watch him play. The thing that scares me with Aaron Scott is for how talented he is and for how great of a player he is. 
are we going to get him on the football field? Because when it comes to Ohio State, it's like we get these number one recruits in and we, they, we don't let them play. And then the second we get into the transfer portal after the season's over, they go in a transfer portal, they go somewhere else, they get on the field immediately, and they're just balling out out there. And then for some reason, when the reporters ask Ryan Day and these coaches, like, why didn't you let them play? They're like, well, we just didn't think they were up to the potential yet, and we had other guys in front of them that were playing better than them. Are you sure about that? Aaron Scott needs to see the field immediately. Uh, number one ranked recruit in the state of Ohio, so that is great that we're actually getting the best guy in Ohio to come to Ohio State. I enjoy that. But like I said... He needs to get on the football field fucking immediately. Next up, we got a tight end, Max LeBlanc. Blank, I think is how you say your name, bud. Uh, tight end out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. This one will be huge. 6'5", 226 pounds, four-star. Uh, he brings size, strength, as well as fluid movement and strong hands to Ohio State's tight end room. Hopefully, with uh, Kate Stover probably leaving, we need to refill that tight end room. We still have some other tight ends in the room that could possibly rotate in, but we need a big body, and Kate Stover really helped out last season. As being a good big body reliable target i realize it was Kyle, uh, kyle mccord throwing the ball next season hopefully we have a better quarterback throwing the ball so we won't need to completely rely on the tight end position but if max leblanc can come in and be a nice piece in the tight end room hopefully his freshman year maybe he'll see a few targets throughout the season but hopefully within about a year or two he can get on the field with him i would say he seems like the kind of kid to where he might actually stay with the high state all the way through do i see him leaving in the transfer portal I would say if he's not getting any game time, he'll probably be dipping. If he gets some game time throughout the years, he might stay. We got Jalen McLean, uh, safety out of West Orange, uh, New Jersey. We're getting a lot of recruits out of New Jersey here lately. Uh, Comicord uh, and Marvin Harrison Jr., they're kind of from that Jersey side, more Philadelphia area. Uh, Jalen McLean, I've seen a little bit of film on him. Uh, he can play the ball pretty well. He got a few interceptions. The dude can play well. That's what I will say about him. A couple of our guys, uh, Ransom and Proctor, I think they're going to be leaving. I'm not, correct, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not entirely sure if they are leaving 100%, but we need to free fill that safety room. Uh, a lot of defensive players are going to be leaving, so getting another safety in uh, this recruiting class is going to be huge for us. For McLean, I could see him probably leaving within a year or two. We did just have a couple of safeties actually leaving in the transfer portal, so refilling this uh, tr uh, class in this high school recruiting class is going to be huge for us in the safeties and the cornerbacks. Because with a lot of guys leaving, we need to refill. We got Garrett Stover, linebacker out of Sunbury, Ohio. It says here, uh, no prospect in the 2024 cycle visited Ohio State more than Garrett Stover, who will bring toughness, tenacity, and he love for the Ohio State Buckeyes uh, linebacker room. The thing with him is, from what I've seen, and like I just said, he, I feel like, just wanted to be with Ohio State. He didn't want to be anywhere else. He wanted to be a Buckeye. And I think that is a huge thing for Ohio State, that we actually have somebody in this team, in the locker room, that wants to be here and wants to win because a lot of these recruits is like man yeah Ohio State's cool I'm gonna go there but hey NIL money maybe the high state the team is just really cool I can go play for them go play for them about three years go to the NFL be good be good to go with Garrett he wants to actually come here and win for this team he wants to help this team win he's a fan of the team I think when it comes to his skill set with Tommy Eichenberg leaving I think Steel Chambers leaving Garrett will be able to come in and take over hopefully within the next year and be a great solid linebacker for us he's got instincts he can stop the run a good bit uh pass the defense uh i would say he needs to work on a little bit but i think with time like i said about a year he he can really excel and tone hone in on his skill set and get better ian moore offensive lineman out of new palestine indiana he's a four star uh he has a chance to be a standout offensive tackle for the buckeyes as their highest rated offensive lineman in the 2024 class i'm not gonna lie looking at this picture he looks a little bit thin He's going to need to bulk up a little bit because with the way our offensive alignments have been getting pushed around here lately in the past couple of years, that ain't going to cut it, my guy. From what is it said on 247 Sports, it says that he's a very good technician. He's got quick feet. He can be a standout, kind of sound, reliable offensive lineman that you can have within your offensive line room. I'll be excited to see kind of how he plays, if he can develop into being a standout offensive lineman, maybe be a first round pick in the next couple of years. Who knows? But I, I, for him, do I see him staying the full like three to four years? I don't know. If, like I said with all the other guys, I feel like he's going to be with somebody that he's probably not going to get on the field this season or next season. Maybe if there's injuries happening or if some of the offensive linemen that we get on the field next season all play really well. And if they're like juniors and seniors and they all go to the NFL, maybe Ian can step in after next season. We got Eric Mensa. Mensa, I think is how you say your name, bud. Uh, defense alignment at Sta uh, Stafford, Virginia. It says here Eric Man Mensa has the size and the athleticism to develop into a contributor at a defensive tackle for Ohio State. This dude looks like a mammoth. He's a three-star recruit. I tried to see some film on him online and kind of like a little scouting report on him. 
not really much to say. I mean, he's 6'3", about 295 pounds. The dude looks like a beast uh, when in his kind of profile picture. I'll say this about him. If he can step in, because I believe Michael Hall, JTT, and Tyler Williams, they're all going to be going to the NFL out next season. I think, cr fingers crossed, that maybe one of them comes back. But if Eric Mansah can come in, he can develop his skills maybe within a year, get on the field. And if he can be a game wrecker for the defensive line, he can go out there and just disrupt other teams' offensive lines. That'd be huge. We got Peyton Pierce, four-star linebacker out of Lucas, Texas. The dude looks like he could be another... Uh, Tommy Eichenberg, like he looks like his twin just with his full head of hair, to be honest. It says in the top corner, uh, Peyton Pierce delivered one of his best seasons in the country by any high school linebacker and could be an impact player at Ohio State. The thing with being an impact player is your buddy needs to get on the field. And with Ohio State, we have a problem where we have big time recruits and we don't get them on the field right away. I'm going to say with our linebacker room being a little bit weak right now with Peyton Pierce coming in, if he can go out there in this offseason, in the spring, in the summer, and he plays well, Mark my words, we're going to see Peyton Pierce on the field as a true freshman. We got James People running back out of San Antonio, Texas. Another running back coming in the class. Uh, says you're a top 100 recruit in the class of 2024. James People brings next level vision and a dual threat ability to the Ohio State and Tony Alford's running back room. From what I've seen people talking about is People looks like a smaller version of what Henderson and J.K. Dobbins kind of was. Which don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. If he can still has the speed and like it says the next level vision and the twitchiness and the juke spin move ability to get through tackles and take off and hit the home run shots i would love that for him i would say this if he can get on the field within a year that'd be huge some of these running backs i'm not gonna lie with chim train transferring out and then Trevor henderson possibly going in the nfl draft like i said fingers crossed he comes back but i really do think he's gonna go to the nfl our running back room is a little bit small some of these guys these true freshmen might get on the field we got the marion witten tight end at cleveland ohio this dude can be like i said with the other tight end if we can get these tight ends and not exactly be like the small, like just big body, go up and make a physical catch. But if we can transform our tight ends to be more of like within the air raid offense or spread offense and go out there and catch the ball, kind of like the way how we've seen in the NFL with Travis Kelsey, uh, Dalton Kincaid, Sam Laporte. If we can get these tight ends to play like them, that would be amazing. It says here he continues his green, uh, Glenville to Ohio State pipeline and brings high upside to the Buckeyes tight end unit as a receiving playmaker. Hey, with the way the Ohio State receivers are playing right now, and if he can go out there and play like a really good tight end, almost as good to where people are looking to be like, is he a tight end or a receiver? He's going to get on the field as a freshman. Next up, we got five-star receiver Mylon Graham. Brian Hartline working that magic uh, with Mylon Graham coming in. This will be another big piece. Now it's looking like the wide receiver room is getting a little bit tight it says here from the moment Mylon graham was discovered from brian hartline he went from a zero stars to a five star prospect in a storybook ending for our high state so from what they're kind of saying is this dude was a nobody before brian hartline started recruiting him the second hartline said hey i like this guy i want to go recruit him everybody in the world was like oh my god this guy's gonna be amazing then from what i saw on the tape this dude has some great skill the dude can run the dude can high point the ball there was a clip i saw online i think it was him where he was going down the right sideline, the ball got thrown up, and he went up and high-pointed the ball with two, I think a safety and a corner on his sides, caught the ball, and was able to turn left, go upfield, and then when he was about to get surrounded by like five different defenders, quickly cut back and went up the left side and was able to get in the end zone. That is amazing. So far from what I've seen on him, he's got vision, he's got the ability to high-point the ball, he's got ability to catch on the run, he can take the ball from the 10 yard line go the whole way to the house if he needs to with Mylon Graham here's the thing like I said with the wide receiver room getting tight who's going to be the starting receivers because let's just live in a world where Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Buka both go to the NFL like we already know Julian Fleming he transferred out now who's your receivers are you going to have Brandon Ennis Carnot Tate Mylon Graham and then we'll get to him in a minute and Jeremiah Smith is that going to be your starting four are you really going to go into this next season with two sophomores and two freshmen, I don't know if I feel comfortable. But if that doesn't happen with Mylon Graham, I think he's going to stay with the high state. He will get on the field. If not this upcoming season, he'll get a couple of opportunities if like the score gets ran up and everybody, all the starters get taken out and he goes in the game. He's definitely going to get on the field by at least 2025. We got Miles Lockhart, four-star cornerback out of Chandler, Arizona. This dude will be another kind of death piece. Realistically, when I look at him, he could get on the field, but I see him as being somebody that's going to end up transferring out within a year or two. I'm just being honest. This one kind of hurt. 2024 four-star receiver Jeremiah McLean clipped or flipped from Ohio State to Oregon. When I saw this, I was thinking, oh my God, he's going to sign with us. And then I saw the flipped and I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. I'll say this good part in Oregon. I mean, if he wants to go to Oregon play receiver, so be it. Oregon's going to get a stud. That's what I'll say. Oregon's going to get a stud receiver from him. The last two that we have is Edric Houston, five-star defense lineman out of Budford. 
uh, Bufford, Georgia. This dude is a monster. We have talked all season long about how we need to get a five-star defensive lineman. We need to just get somebody in the defensive line room that is going to be a monster. We've gotten guys in the past, but we need somebody in here that is going to just wreak havoc and get sack numbers back up for this defensive line because that has been our problem. We don't get sacks. We don't get tackles for loss. We need to get those numbers better. With him, oh my God. From the film I watch, Edric, he knows how to blow up an offensive line, go right through, tear apart centers and guards, make their lives living hells. From what I can say from him is we, we got somebody. We finally got someone. Now, the big question is, is he going to see the field next season? God, I hope so. And last up, the one that we've all been waiting for all day long and all week long, all month long, all year long, Jeremiah Smith, wide receiver out of Hollywood, Florida, is coming to Ohio State. It's been talked about over the past couple weeks and even months, could he flip to Florida State or maybe even Miami? Maybe he goes somewhere like a Florida Gators because he is from Florida. Would he want to just stay home, play down there? Obviously, like why? who wouldn't want to play in Miami, Florida or Tallahassee where it's warm all year round, nice weather, nice beaches? Why wouldn't you want to go there? But with the potential that this dude has, people are calling him the next Calvin Johnson. Think about that for a moment. If people are calling you the next Calvin Johnson, you have the chance to go to Ohio State with a wide receiver coach that has produced multiple first round wide receiver picks over the past like five seasons. I want to say he's probably going to be by the time Brian Hartline's career is done. He's going to have the whole NFL filled with just his receivers. Why wouldn't you want to go be coached by him? The thing with Jeremiah Smith is I fucking swear to God. If he does not see the field next season, even once, Ryan Day, you might need to get your ass packed in bags and get the fuck out. Now, I know I'm a little bit exaggerating on that, but I do think Ryan Day, he's going to get Jeremiah Smith on the field immediately. Because in the press conference, whenever he was out talking to the podium, it was kind of funny when they were saying somebody was whispering over to Ryan and be like, hey, we got him. We got him. He signed. And Ryan was like, what do you mean? And they said, Jeremiah, he just signed. And Ryan was like having a little fun where he was like about to pass out like, oh, thank God, thank God. But other than that, that's going to pretty much wrap up my review of all the recruits that are coming up to Ohio State. Like I said in the very beginning, this is my opinion on kind of who I think is going to be good or bad for the Ohio State team. I think a lot of these guys are going to be good. Like I said, that defensive lineman, uh, Broderick, he's going to be a big time help. Jeremiah Smith's going to be huge. Some of the offensive linemen, they're going to be huge for us. Aaron Scott, the corner, he's going to be huge. He's going to really help out that defense. The big question is just going to come down to how many of these guys are going to stay the full three or four years and how many are going to say after one season, you know what, I, I don't want to sit here anymore. I want to go play now. But other than that, that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully, you guys did go on to enjoy today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, as always, make sure you go and drop a like. It's very much appreciated if you do so. If you wanted to watch the entire today's video, thank you very much. And you had a different opinion on kind of all the recruits coming to Ohio State. If you think Ohio State should have been going after anybody different, and if you want to leave your, their name down in the comment section down below. If you liked any of these recruits and you want to leave your opinion on kind of what you think about all these recruits, if you think how many of them are going to see the field immediately, do you think any of them are going to transfer out? Like I said, leave it in the comment section down below your opinion on the whole thing. If you are a fan of the content that I do post here on the channel and you want to go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button, feel free to do so. And do not forget to hit that little notification bell to be notified second i post i upload a high state news content whenever it comes to big breaking news like this here on the channel so if you're a fan of the type of stuff and you want to be notified like i said subscribe button notification bell feel free to do so but without further ado this has been Don talk sports have a great day peace